This is a Ferrari 458 Spider. It's got a 4.5 litre V8 with 562 brake horsepower, a top speed of 198 miles an hour, and it'll do 0 to 62 miles an hour in 3.4 seconds. Not only is it fast, but it's beautiful too. Its beauty comes from its shape, which is partially dictated by its mid-engine layout, something of a Ferrari staple, but it wasn't supposed to be like this. Ferraris weren't supposed to have anything other than V12s. Allow me to explain. I want to tell the story of Enzo Ferrari and his son, Dino. Dino's legacy is right here in this 458 Spider. It's in every Ferrari that doesn't have a V12 engine. You see, Alfredo Ferrari was the apple of Enzo's eye. He was going to be his successor to carry the torch when Enzo was no longer around. For his entire life, he was groomed in all things Ferrari. Then he went to study economics at Bologna, and after that, he was sent to Switzerland to study mechanical engineering. It was there, though, that his health began to deteriorate. Alfredo, or Dino, to his father, found movement difficult. Doctors didn't know what was wrong at first, and two years into his engineering studies, he moved back to Modena. Dino had Duchenne muscular dystrophy, and his muscles were wasting away. During his time in Modena, Dino created the 750 Monza Racer and was the inspiration behind a new 1.5-litre V6 race engine. Dino Ferrari died on the 30th of June 1956. He was just 24 years old. Understandably, Enzo didn't take the loss particularly well. It hit him quite hard. He was his son, his heir, his everything. After a little while, Enzo found the perfect way to memorialize his son, though. Not by just naming a car after him, but by naming an entire brand after him. The Dino. The Dino cars, well, they were supposed to be the affordable cars made by Ferrari, designed to take on the likes of the Porsche 911 and what have you. But they were never going to have a V12. Those were reserved for the full-fat Ferraris. When it came to engine layout, Enzo was hesitant about using mid-engines because, well, he thought his customers might find them a little bit tricky to get to grips with. After a while, though, he saw sense. In 1968, the first Dino appeared, the 206 GT. It came with a mid-mounted 2.0-litre V6, the one inspired by Dino himself. Over its year lifespan, 150 were made, and in 1969 it was succeeded by the 246 GT and GTS. The 246 wasn't the last Dino though, that would be the 308 GT4. From 1973 to 1976, the 3.0-litre V8-powered 2 plus 2 wore the Dino badge. In 76, it became a full-fat Ferrari and started a tradition of mid-engined rear-wheel drive V8 prancing horses. Following that was the 208 GT4. Now that had a two litre V8 and the reason for its teeny tiny engine was because the Italian government gave tax breaks on engines of two litres or less. Joining and then succeeding those cars was the 308 and 208 GTS and GTB. Both had V8s firmly in the middle. The dinky 208 even got turbo power to give its tiny engine big numbers. As the 80s took hold, Ferrari experimented with turbocharging even more and bought out the 288 GTO, the first supercar made by Ferrari. It was designed for Group B racing, but the series was cancelled before Ferrari could get a slice of it. Its successor, the F40, built on the whole twin-turbo supercar idea somewhat too. Then came the 328, the 348, the legendary 355, the 360, the 430, and this, the 458, and numerous iterations of each in between. And they all happened because of one man and his idea. Now, I've driven a 458 before. I drove the coupe, and unsurprisingly, it was an utterly brilliant car. So, what's it like if you take the roof off? Well, the surprisingly little difference between the two, obviously you get a lot more headroom, that's not really a surprise, and the roof is very, very smart. It 
can go down in just 14 seconds dead. Someone once said to me that one of life's true great experiences is driving with a roof down in a bright red Ferrari. And you know what? They were right. I'd never experienced that before today. And I'm so glad I have. The sun's shining. I've got the sound of a beautiful V8 right behind my head. And the way it delivers its sound. The 458 Spider is about experiencing the noise because the noise in the cabin, oh, it's very good. Race mode, down a cog, down a cog, noise. <laughs> comes better than that. It's a bit good then, of course that's to be expected, it's a modern mid-engine V8 Ferrari. No need to mince words on that, really. Ferrari wouldn't let a duffer breach Marinello's gate at all. However, looking at Ferrari right now, I wonder what's next for the company in general. Ferrari's self-titled halo car, the LaFerrari, uses super-advanced hybrid tech to go harder and faster than any Ferrari before it. And because of that, it emits 330 grams per kilometre of carbon dioxide, which is pretty impressive for a car that kicks out nearly a thousand horsepower. Then take a look at the new California T. Not only has the California had a rather natty redesign, it's also been given a smaller engine with a turbocharger. Now what that means is that the California now emits 50 grams per kilometre less than the old car. It also has a pretty epic torque figure and manages very impressive MPG numbers for a car with a 3.8 litre engine. It seems that turbos are the way to go for efficiency and for torque. They're not just for GTIs and diesels anymore. They're for everything. some very serious rumours floating about that the next 458 will have turbo power and as a result a smaller engine. If that were true then this car is something of an ending, the last naturally aspirated mid-engine Ferrari. Some may moan endlessly about how the noise will change and how it may never be the same again but think about it laterally. When a company like Ferrari sets its mind on something the end product isn't going to be half arsed it's going to be the best it can possibly be. It'll sound right, it'll go right, and it'll feel right. Every inch, the prancing horse it should be. If you look at Ferrari's past, you'll see that it only uses its best cars as a testbed for things to come. The likes of the 288 GTO, the F40, the F50, the Enzo, and the LaFerrari, they aren't there simply to look pretty, go a bit quicker than the rest of the range, and be monumentally expensive. No, they're there to show what the next generation of Ferrari's road cars are going to be like. But whatever Ferrari does in future, the 458 is a truly stunning piece of engineering and the only reason it's here is because of one man whose life was cut tragically short and his great idea.